We are the front door to the Zika virus. I don't want it here. I want to close that door. Key West is the end of the road. It has always attracted very independent-minded people, and they don't particularly like being told what to do. No other technology out there can control this mosquito to this effect. This is not a silver bullet. This is just another tool in the toolbox. The World Health Organization declaring a global health emergency. We now expect the virus transmitted by mosquitoes, of course, could reach farther north to 30 states now. We need the latest now in the battle against Zika. The CDC says the virus has been linked to birth defects. Scientists hoping to use a new weapon, genetically modified mosquitoes. They're hot about this here. They're dead set against using this neighborhood in an experiment. They're trying to jam this down our throat without our consent. And they're warning that your neighborhood could be next. This proposed trial of GMO mosquitoes has been pretty contentious right from the beginning. I've lived in the Keys for 25 years. Covering the GMO mosquito trial is basically half my beat at this point. This is the first U.S. trial. Oxitec has already been using these mosquitoes in the Cayman Islands and has done trials in Brazil. But if they want to use them in the U.S., including Puerto Rico, they need approval from U.S. government agencies. And this is the place where they've invested in making that trial happen. Why did we come to the Keys? Well, initially we were invited back in 2009, 2010, because there was a dengue outbreak here. So there was a very real risk to people from trying to catch in the disease. We put two genes into this mosquito, Aedes aegypti. One gene is a self-limiting gene, and the other gene is a fluorescent marker. We release the males, which do not bite or transmit disease. Now those males have one job, and that's to find a female and pass on their genes. When that happens, the female that mates with that male, all her offspring inherit the self-limiting gene and die. Zika is in the news almost daily about sort of these doom and gloom scenarios. So you're in sort of this catch-22. You want to be able to have more information to tell people whether it's safe or not, or whether it's effective or not in actually removing the mosquitoes, but you're not going to be able to get those answers until you actually do one of these field trials. We looked at sites all up and down the Keys, and Key Haven turned out to be a perfect site. We got to stop that Zika virus from being a flash fire coming through us to the rest of the country. Yeah. Why wouldn't we want something that would, is going to curtail that? I've lived here in Key Haven for 38 years. I moved here when I retired from the Army, and all four of my grandchildren live here. And this is the only house we've ever owned. Here's the thing about living in Key West, which is so unique, is you gotta be outside. You can't be inside. The back end of the house is the most important part of the house because we're on the water. I finally retired about three, four years ago. My wife retired. And uh, now we just sit back and swipe at mosquitoes. Key Heaven is a neighborhood of 444 houses, where the houses go from 500,000 to $5 million. The mansions, the gardens are perfectly manicured. I live for over 18 years now in the Keys. I am a single mother with three kids. I work full time, I carry two businesses, and I fight mosquitoes. Yeah. Oh, you want some key lime? Um, uh, key lime. Mila DeMeyer is a local realtor who's extremely passionate about this subject. She doesn't live on Key Haven, but she started an online petition, and that online petition now has twice as many signatures as people who live in the Keys. I don't want to do this. This is not my job. Gracias por la oportunidad de estar aquí en el programa y de poder compartir con vosotros. Today I'm doing a radio call in a radio station in Orlando. I'm talking about the genetic modified mosquitoes. Pero que no queremos ser parte de un experimento. When we talk in generations, sometimes you don't really get to see the effect in nature for six months, a year, ten years down the road. My house is two miles from Key Haven. 
this is a beautiful place and this is my home now and this is what it's worth fighting for. Because if you don't fight for this place, what are you going to fight for? I think there's just an, an unease in general about what they're attempting to do here. I also think there hasn't been a lot of information given out to be able to have a real dialogue between the developers of the technology and the people that live in the area where they're proposing to release them. Are we opening a Pandora box in a neighborhood that really had no cases? No chicken, guya, no dengue, and obviously we had no sickness. With the Food and Drug Administration, they put a drug on the market. If something goes wrong, what do they do? Recall it. When you're releasing these GM mosquitoes, oh, are they going to recall it? When they're already on there, and we're talking about about millions, what are they going to do? I don't want my kid to be used as salad wraps. We can't guarantee that we won't release any females. Now, data from previous trials that we've done, we got less than one in every 10,000 males that we released was a female. Now, if you do get bitten by that female, that bite is no different from the bite of a wild-type female. So practically, guys, you know that we were last week to DC. She's at every meeting. She really organizes the opposition, and she sort of represents that public opposition. Today, we will examine the state of science in the most recent battle in the war against mosquito-borne disease, the Zika virus. Summer is coming, and so are the mosquitoes that spread the Zika virus. Current insecticidal products are just not sufficient to control this mosquito in the urban environment. So at Oxitec, we looked for and developed a new approach, and that was to use the mosquito against itself. What's, what, what's the answer CB, uh, FDA has given you? Say, why can't we do this now? Uh, the answer is um, that we have received is it's complicated. Well, come on. We need to act now. We should have acted a year ago. Today, no, I only can in the name of my family and my community, but also for the rest of the nation. If we're going to work with biotechnology, we have to work together. I think it's very divisive, and I think for anybody who lives in the neighborhood and might support the trial, it's probably pretty hard because, as you've seen, on Key Haven, there are no consent signs everywhere. I grew up during the polio age, March of Dimes, you know, I grew up through tuberculosis, I grew up through measles and mumps. I remember the first heart transplant and all of these things that no longer exist. And it was all by the medical profession and scientists taking this harm away from us. We gotta believe in science. I think based on the, the evidence that we have so far, I think a, a controlled field trial is probably the next best step. The problem we have is that the field trial is being done where people are. And so we have to take into the consideration the people that live there and really listen to whether or not they want this to happen or not. They've already decided to put this question to a ballot to the entire Keys, and they're going to decide whether that ballot question should be binding or not, because they have to approve the trial. Okay, we'll call the meeting to order. Florida Keys Mosquito Control Board meeting. So the reality of the situation is that we are running out of options. But I think we need to slow down a little bit because I don't want to be the guinea pig to figure out whether this is working or not. Which would you rather have flying around, a mosquito that had been treated with GMO or one that's infected with Zika virus? I can't speak to the science, but I can speak to the process. We have the right to vote on issues that affect us. The threat from Zika is very, very real. The threat from our technology is virtually non-existent. They're voicing their concern and they're asking for a vote. And I don't think it's too much to give them, considering this has never been tried here before. This is an interesting test case to see whether a local population will accept GMO technology. So while we're focused on Key Haven and where those people are going to make a local decision about whether they want to move forward or not, this does have larger implications um, in terms of where you might be able to use this in the future. So we are trying to set the standards, not only for here, but for the rest of the country and probably the rest of the world. Let's just see in this little bitty community of a couple thousand people, if it works. What's the harm in that?